uh, Senator Warner is recognized from Virginia from his office. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You got me a little bit quicker there. I'm sorry, I then um, let me just hold on Thank a you, second. Mark. Um, I appreciate again you having this uh, this hearing, Mr. Chairman. This is an issue I think we all need to learn a little more about. Um, I've got a twofold question. One is um, I want to reiterate. I think maybe you and the, the ranking member already raised this. You know, can we check on a real time basis that there is sufficient backing um, on these stable coins? And let's assume for a moment there is, but I would like to get to reiteration of that from um, uh, the undersecretary. But the bigger question I have is assuming there is this backing and you've got, in a sense, um, potentially billions and billions of, of assets as having that one to one backing. How is there a viable business model here uh, for these stable coins unless they are charging exorbitant amount of fees and um, uh, other add on cost? I know the idea behind um, oftentimes stable coins is that this is there's less friction. Uh, there is um, uh, you can transfer these resources from um, dollars here to currencies that may be unstable in in second and third world nations. But still, if you've got a, a one to one backing uh, and that, that kind of capital basically set aside other than large transaction fees, how do these uh, entities make any money? Understand the line? Sure. Uh, thank you for your question. So in terms of real time backing, some um, some of the I've got no volume, Mr. Chairman here. I, I, I don't hear the. Yeah, I anything. seem to have lost the camera. All right. Some, I'm not sure if you can hear me. Some some stable coins do provide uh, audits of their assets and post them. They are, they are not there are no regulations and there is no regulator to confirm those statements. Um, in terms of the stable coin business model, um, it strikes me as there's probably several um, and they probably vary. One is. The backing for the stable coin of a dollar, uh, those assets could be invested in, say, longer term securities, even safe securities, and there'd be some spread. But I think, as you point out, certainly there are fees that are charged to help um, to provide some revenue. But I do, it is an area that is changing very rapidly. New, new products are being introduced. Um, every day, so I think the business model will evolve over time. Madam Undersecretary, one thing I, I, I had reported to me from an expert in this field is um, if, we, if we look at these tokens on a bigger basis, not just in terms of stable coins, um, we've got about 7,000 publicly traded stocks uh, in, in, this, uh, in this country with, with the attendant um, regulations that are in place. You know, if you look at the crypto exchanges, there are about 17,000 tokens that are being traded on these crypto exchanges with, again, varying levels of backing, many of them not even claiming to be stable coins. An area that I'm, I know the ranking member and I have discussed and we've got some legislation to make sure that people are not unfairly uh, penalized, but in the world of DeFi and decentralized finance, uh, there have been estimates, and I don't think there's an accurate number yet, but that there could be upwards literally of a million different coins or different tokens out in that field, all of them potentially moving uh, to some of these cryptocurrency exchanges. Uh, should we be concerned about this and the lack of transparency and the volume simply of these items that are being traded? Yeah, so I think the um, what you're referring to is the rapid increase in the digital assets market and new products and new services that are being provided. And there are concerns about um, lack of transparency, the fraud potential for um, manipulation, misleading advertising. Those are areas that are of great concern to regulators and believe that there needs to be important investor and consumer protections put in place for that. 
And that's an area that SEC and the CFTC are working actively in that space. Um, stable coins, just again to, um, to emphasize, are a subset, a small subset of that smaller space of digital assets. And they purport to have stable value. Their prices are not nearly as volatile as the prices of digital assets more broadly. But it's because of that uh, promise of stable value, they become the possible use for payments on a wide basis in the, um, in the non-crypto world. And so in that sense, it, be, it raises a whole different set of risks, these prudential risks that the PWG report highlighted, the um, run risk, the payment system risk, and concentration of economic power. Well, Mr. Chairman, I, I appreciate you holding the hearing, and I think there's great potential in digital assets, but boy, I think we've got a lot of uh, education to go on. Thank you.